Well, hi, hi there. there. I'm here today with Emily from Snake Discovery, and if you haven't seen her channel, you are missing out. Of all the channels on YouTube, and I've, I've looked, hers is definitely the channel that most reflects what we're trying to accomplish here at Clint's Reptiles. It's definitely the most similar to ours in terms of content, in terms of knowledge. She's honest, knowledgeable, and just awesome. So you gotta get over there and you gotta check it out. And that is actually why I've traveled all the way to Wisconsin to see her. You may have seen that before we filmed this video, Emily actually treated me to dinner. And now that we've got bellies full of cricket tacos, we're ready to move on to the next order of business. So let's talk about some awesome snakes. I love snakes for lots of reasons. They're beautiful. I mean, look at these snakes. They're mysterious. They're misunderstood. They're often fairly low maintenance pets, which is really, really pleasant. Uh, and they're just fun. They're fun to handle. They're fun to watch. They're fun to interact with. You learn a lot just by watching a snake behave in the wild, but then to have one in captivity as a pet, it's just incredible. And there's always something more to learn about them, which is what I really love about snakes in particular. You may have seen our video five of the best pet snakes you could possibly get, or our top five reptiles for beginners. All of the snakes that we have covered in those videos are pretty much appropriate for people who are fairly new to reptile keeping. And while some of the snakes on this list that we're making today may be appropriate for beginner keepers, a lot of them are actually more properly suited to advanced or at least intermediate level keepers. And remember, there's an entire world full of thousands of different species of snakes. So there are many more than just these five snakes that would make great pet snakes in captivity. Our channel and Snake Discovery, I mean, it's called Snake Discovery, are very much interested in introducing you to as many of these awesome snakes as possible. And hopefully you'll be able to figure out which of all these amazing snakes is the perfect one for you. So with Emily's help and from Emily's personal collection, we bring you five more of the best pet snakes you could possibly get. First on our list is this amazing snake which is the Woma python. Womas are excellent snakes because they stay relatively small. I mean, they only get roughly four to five feet on average. So, I mean, that's similar, maybe a little bit bigger than a ball python, but still very reasonably sized to keep comfortably in, say, a 40 gallon tank. I also love these snakes because, I mean, look at that pattern and look at their orange belly. That's just beautiful. They do tend to lose that bright orange colored head as they get older, um, but they're still a beautiful snake in general. Womo pythons are also excellent eaters. They like don't hesitate at all when food is nearby. I mean, there's exceptions here and there, of course, mm -hmm. but for the most part, these eat without hesitation and they'll eat frozen pod just fine. They're really excellent. I, I also love, they're an Australian python, and that means that at least outside of Australia and probably even there, Almost all of them that you get are going to be captive bred, and captive bred is just better. They've got a great temperament. They're just, mm -hmm. they're just really, really awesome, and and they're not even that hard to find. This is a snake that I think uh, somebody who's new to, to snake keeping could be very successful keeping woma pythons, and very, very happy. That the toughest thing for them would just be being able to find one. Mm -hmm. They're very hardy and. A uh, fun fact about Womans is since they're native to Australia, a large part of their diet is other reptiles and specifically other snakes, including venomous snakes. So they're actually immune to those venomous snakes' as venom, which I think is just crazy. Well, and it's really helpful if like a red belly black snake or a, a king brown snake happened to bite your Woman icon. But of course, not every snake is perfect. One of the cons to Woma pythons is actually their huge appetites. They sometimes can be a little overly excited when it comes mm. to feeding times. So you have to be very careful and watch their body language closely to avoid potentially getting bit yourself. Which is definitely something that comes with experience. So if you are a brand new keeper, there's a decent chance you could get bit because it confuses you with prey when you first get into the enclosure. But as you get used to what they look like when they're honed in on food, you'll learn to avoid this, it won't be a problem. And since these aren't as readily available snakes as like ball pythons are, they are quite a bit more expensive, but I think they are worth every penny. Oh, absolutely. For sure. And they're so unusual. Who do you know who's got walnuts? Obviously there are a ton of pros to walnut pythons, very few cons. 
easily one of the greatest pet snakes on planet Earth. The next on our list is one of the prettiest snakes that you will ever see, if not one of the best pet snakes you can possibly get, and that is the green tree python. These are beautiful at all stages of life. Uh, as babies, green tree pythons start out as bright red or yellow neonates, and they're starting to breed other colored mutations now too. But the vast majority of adults slowly transition to this beautiful green color as they age. And it's really neat to watch that transformation. So they're really unique just because of the coloration, first off. Also, observe how the snake is perched. It's not moving around as much as, say, the normal python does. Instead, this is a very arboreal species of snake, which means it spends most of its time up in the tree canopies. So it has evolved to learn how to perfectly grasp the branch so that it can feel nice and secure. Probably the only snakes you would ever confuse with these are the emerald tree boas, which are actually convergent. They're not very closely related to these green tree pythons at all, but between the two, the green tree python is probably the easier pet reptile. I'll not to say it's easy, but easier. Typically, green tree pythons are a little bit more laid back than emerald tree boas, but again, that depends on the individual snake, and that doesn't mean that the green tree python is typically a laid back species of snake. Not at all. These are known for a bit of a feisty uh, attitude. Absolutely. This, this is a snake that you may or may not be able to handle. They've got big teeth. So you got to be aware, and they're, they're very enthusiastic about using them at times. So this is definitely a snake that may bite you in a, in a bloody mess several times before you really figure out how to handle it safely. You can handle them as long as you are careful and you watch their body language, but you have to keep in mind that they have very thin and delicate bones. So you can't just reach in and pick them up and unwrap them, force them to unwrap uh, around their perch because that can pot potentially break bones. So you have to be very careful in how you handle these guys. But that's again why they t are more for experienced or at least intermediate keepers. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of green tree pythons are still farm raised, thankfully a lot of them are captive bred nowadays, including this one actually. And captive bred green tree pythons are typically more handleable anyway. So not only do they have a lower chance of having parasites, but they're also a little bit more handleable. Actually, uh, way more handleable. Yeah, I was going to say, I shouldn't say a little bit. They're they are a lot more handleable. Absolutely. <laughs> Green tree pythons are also amazing eaters, and the way they eat is super interesting. They don't grab their mouths and constrict it on the bottom of their enclosure, but instead they eat it while staying um, suspended in their tree branch or in their, on their perch the entire time. When it comes to a cool snake to watch, it's hard to get something that's much better than a green tree python. They kind of move their head upside down and they let gravity help pull the rodent down into their throat, which I've never seen in any other species of snake before. Why would just, you have to? Right, yeah, just an arboreal snake thing. Yep, most snakes are not hovering in the air, so all is well. Mm -hmm. Stinking rad snake. But they're not perfect. They're not perfect. The main issue with green tree pythons is that they are not a very handleable species of snake. They typically have those sassy personalities, especially in wild-caught specimens or farm-raised specimens. So you have to treat them with a lot of respect, and you have to keep a very close eye on their behavior to avoid getting tagged. And they've got big teeth, so if you get tagged, uh, you're not going to miss it. You will feel it. And there will be a lot of blood afterward. Uh, and then you'll be fine. Then you will be fine. There's no venom or anything. They won't kill you. Big teeth. When you hide out in the trees and you grab things like birds out of the air through all their feathers, your teeth are serious and they've got some serious mm. teeth, but they won't be any long-term harm. Mm -mm. And that's probably the worst thing about handling them. Care is a little bit harder for them. They're, they're pretty hardy when you have the proper setup, but a lot of people do not provide that proper setup. I mean, they have specific humidity requirements. They need a more vertically oriented enclosure rather than horizontally oriented with more like ground dwelling species of snakes. Mm. But as long as you have the right uh, setup, they're, again, very hardy. However, they are a little bit more ex on the expensive side because even the wild-caught ones or the farm-raised ones can be a little spendy, but especially the captive bred specimens uh, are going to cost you a little bit more because there's more effort that goes into raising these in captivity. But if you're willing to provide the right enclosure and if handling isn't that big of a deal for you, honestly, it's hard to beat a green tree pipe. Are amazing. Next on our list is a snake that a lot of people have been asking about because people are interested in a snake that doesn't eat rodents. And 
we have finally brought you some egg eating snakes. These are really cool snakes. I would not recommend them for beginners for a couple reasons that we'll get into later. The egg eating snake, of course, eats eggs. It's called the African egg eating snake because it lives in Africa. So its name tells you a lot about this type of snake. They eat specifically bird eggs. They do not eat reptile eggs. When the egg eating snake is hungry, they just swallow bird eggs whole. They push them to the back of their throat where they are cracked by vertebral uh, projections. And then they drink the juices inside of the egg, but they do not eat the shell. Instead, they crunch it up and spit it out. So feeding them is super easy because you just scatter appropriately sized bird eggs in their enclosure, and then you just check to see when they turn into egg shells, and then you replace them with new eggs. You don't have to have scheduled feeding nights for egg eating snakes, but they will very often go on long periods of time where they fast since they do this naturally in the wild since birds don't lay eggs throughout the entire year. So it's normal for them to not want to eat and during those periods of time where they are refusing to eat anything, you do have to make sure you change out those eggs frequently so that they are still fresh for when the snake is ready to eat. Those are a lot of great pros, but I think there are some cons. One thing that you said is it's super easy as long as you have appropriately sized bird eggs. These two are big enough where they eat quail eggs, which is very easy to provide because most Asian uh, food stores or Asian markets will carry quail eggs of usually a couple different sizes, but it's the baby egg eating snakes that will only eat finch or sometimes canary eggs. And those, as you can imagine, are a lot harder to come by on a regular basis than quail eggs. You don't have canary eggs just laying around? No, no, unfortunately I don't, or finch eggs. A lot of people, though, actually will raise their own finches and just let them lay eggs in nests and use those as food for babies. But not many people want both a pet egg-eating snake and pet birds to feed the egg-eating snake. So instead, what they end up doing is buying older adult egg-eating snakes, which generally means if you buy an older one, there's a good chance that it's wild caught. At the moment, most egg-eating snakes are all wild caught, and they're wild caught as sub-adults or full adults. These two, I'm pretty sure, did originally come from the wild. They are rescues. This is actually my first one from a local herpetological society that someone didn't want anymore. I took her in, quarantined her. They, they've been doing great, but there's still a good chance that if you were to buy an egg-eating snake that was wild caught, it can have, it could be full of parasites. And so it's good to preventatively treat these for parasites, which is not something that every beginner reptile owner wants to do or is able to do. Another con is that uh, wild caught egg eating snakes sometimes don't want to eat and they don't deal with being in captivity very well. So they're first off harder to find and then if you do find them they end up dying in your care because they don't transition well. And it's not just the wild caught egg eaters that can be picky eaters, captive red ones can be just as picky. So even if you have a steady source of finch eggs, which is first off hard to come by, Who doesn't have finch eggs? <laughs> the babies sometimes are like, eh, I don't want to eat, and they pass away because they don't do well in captivity themselves. If you are able to find a captive bred specimen, that's not a guarantee that it will do wonderfully, like as well as a corn snake. They are just fragile snakes in general, and they can be notoriously picky eaters. Generally speaking, whenever you buy a, a snake, hatchling or, or adult, you want to make sure it's feeding before you get it. And so that would be a really good thing to check on, especially with an egg eating snake. I get emails all the time from people who buy a baby or a young egg eating snake and then they realize they don't have a, a source of eggs. And I'm like, oh, well, if you are interested in an egg eating snake, before you even think about buying one, make sure you have a reliable source of eggs of the appropriate size, otherwise you're going to run into that issue too. Honestly, if you're looking for a snake and you cannot deal with rodent feeders, the egg-eating snake is one of the best. However, it's not an easy snake, not, not by any means. So do not do it because it's easier not to feed them rodents. Feeding them rodents will be the easier choice, but if you just can't do that, the egg-eating snake might be the perfect pet snake for you. Next on our list is absolutely one of the coolest pet snakes you could possibly own one of the coolest snakes i've ever seen or ever held and that is the false water cobra these are one of my favorite species of snakes favorite species of colubrids just all together i love false water cobras 
They're of course named after the fact that if they're feeling threatened, they will stretch out the skin on the sides of their neck to try to almost imitate a cobra. Uh, but they hold their bodies more horizontally than cobras do. Cobras will pull up more. So that's one of the differences between the two. But they have as big scales just like cobras do. So they're very good at mimicking the cobras, that's for sure. They also have huge appetites and they will eat any time of day, as much food as you want to eat them. They are prone to getting obese because of this, so you have to watch and make sure you don't feed them too much. But you can feed them rodents, birds, fish, they'll eat amphibians in the wild. They don't care, they're garbage disposals. So feeding is not an issue with these snakes at all. So these will eat as much as you want to give them, but because of that, they are prone to becoming obese. So you have to limit how much you feed them. False water cobras are also a surprisingly smart species of snake. They recognize you to a point. You can tell it just looking at them. They really remind me of Kribos and mm -hmm. indigo snakes. Mm -hmm. that, they've got that same look in their eye. They do. The way they behave, you can just tell that they are, they're, they're with it more than some other species of colubrids. As much as I like other colubrids, these guys definitely uh, take the cake as being smarter. There's something special. Mm -hmm. They're also beautifully colored. I mean, look at that. They also get a decent size without getting like a 14 foot Burmese python. Their max size is, is about seven feet or so. Females will get larger than the males as with most other species of snakes. But the males get a considerable size as well. This is a male and he has a bit of growing to do. We've had him for about four years, three years now. We got him as a hatchling and he's just a tank. This guy is solid. What a dude. But not every snake is perfect. The biggest drawback to the false water cobra that makes people hesitant about owning them is the fact that they are rear fanged and mildly venomous. They're not going to kill you, but they do have the potential to cause some uh, irritation and swelling. But being rear fanged, that means that the fangs are in the back of their mouth because venom is really more for helping with digestion than for, well, hurting people. And so it's not a very good defensive weapon. It's really most effective when they're swallowing something down. And if you don't let them chew on you long enough to get your fingers to the back of their mouth, they're probably not gonna envenomate you. However, if this snake does envenomate you, you will probably become somewhat aware of the effects of that venom. Like Emily said, it's not gonna kill you, but they are venom. You still don't wanna get bit by these. Because of their huge appetites, they often get into what I call food mode and food mode is triggered instantly when they think you have food, and that can potentially be an issue if you want to pick up and handle the snake. You have to first get them out of food mode before you can do so. This snake, as wonderful as he is, he's super friendly, not head shy, he gets into food mode, and you saw it, like when you came over and we first took him out, we had to let him calm down and realize that there is no food right now, you're being handled. And then once they realize that, they're typically fine. This is something that a lot of snakes actually will do. You know, you've, you've got to make sure that they're aware that they're not being fed. With a lot of snakes that have been worked with, they're not going to bite you out of fear, but sometimes they think that you're bringing a meal or that you are a meal. Mm -hmm. And you don't want them to have to learn that by latching onto your fingers. Exactly. They might cost a little bit more than, say, a ball python or a corn snake, but again, they are worth every penny. Oh, heck yeah. Incredible. This might be one of the best pet snakes you could possibly get. Last, but certainly not least, is one of the most requested snakes, at least ever since the last Top 5 Snakes video, which is the Rosy Boa. These are great because they stay a pretty small size. This is an adult male. He's actually in his 20s. He is very old, um, as far as snake years go. But they get around two to three feet max. So that's not very big at all as far as pet snakes go. So you could comfortably house one in like a 20 gallon long. They also are great eaters, huge appetites, sometimes a little bit too big for their, uh, their eyes, but uh, that's okay. You don't have to worry about them not wanting to eat. Rosy boas also come in uh, several different colors. So I mean, they're pretty snakes to look at. They kind of look like shiny beads all the way down. So really unique coloration and uh, shape and just overall look to their scales. They're very hardy snakes too. And they're generally easy to handle and friendly. Although sometimes you get some that are a little more ornery than others, including this one, which is why I'm being a, I'm keeping a close eye on him to make sure that he doesn't think that I'm his next meal. I find the temperament on rosy boas to be fairly similar to sand boas, where some individuals just 
are cantankerous and will spontaneously bite you, and most of them are great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Rosy boas can also be a little bit harder to find or come by in the reptile world, but if you go to a local reptile expo, there's generally uh, a, a couple at least available, and captive bred, again, is always the way to go. They are a North American species of snake, though, so some of them can still be found wild caught, but I've found that the vast majority of them are captive bred for sale nowadays. And it's funny that they're so much rarer. There are just some, some reptiles that are just never as popular, like African fat-tailed geckos, nowhere near as common as leopard geckos, even though they're very similar. And these guys are a lot less common than sand boas, but they're honestly both very, very rad and very rad for very similar reasons. A lot of the snakes we've been talking about are good for like intermediate or advanced keepers, but this is a beginner level snake, I would say. Absolutely, but fun for anyone. The rosy boa, even even as a beginner snake keeper, could be one of the best pet snakes you could possibly get. Well, as you can see, there are some just totally amazing pet snakes out there. We will be releasing full videos about every single one of the snakes on this list. And some of those videos are going to come out on our channel, Clinch Reptiles, but some of them are going to be on Emily's channel, Snake Discovery. So if you want to be sure that you don't miss any of those videos, you got to subscribe to both channels and you got to click that little bell so you get a notification whenever a video comes out. Between these two channels, you will be so full of joy, reptile-related joy, that you won't have any room in your heart for anything else. And you'll learn so much by following both of the channels. That is true. As always, like and subscribe, and subscribe to Snake Discovery, <laughs> and we hope to see you real soon. Well, hi hi there. there! Would you be willing to do that one more time? I had this huge hot glue doohickey on my arm, <laughs> and I found yeah. it. <laughs> the one of those strings. And I'm dealing with it over here. <laughs> what the yeah. heck? That's just crazy. That's awesome. I love the pattern. Love it. I we'll edit it in later for a uh, keyboard, for a jack he was hooding for me just to show me that he's an amazing snake. Oh, yeah, I he wanted to show off. I love him. Exactly. I think that worked. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have so many great puns. I'm <laughs> glad you think so. Jason doesn't think so. I think they're Jason great. will edit this and he'll be like, oh my gosh. What an exciting day. Oh, see?